Now, the last thing that any one of us would want to hear right now is how Corona could affect another part of our body, like the brain. But a lot of patients are experiencing neurological symptoms like psychosis, confusion and delusions. This made me wonder if COVID can directly affect the brain and even leave long-term consequences. To find out, let's examine a real patient's history and see what we know and don't know about the prevalence, potential causes and effects of COVID on the brain. Let's look at a patient, Sarah. She's 55 and never had any mental disorders. She was admitted to the hospital with COVID symptoms such as fever, cough, muscle aches, as well as loss of smell and taste. During her stay, she required minimum oxygen treatment and was in the hospital only for three days. So Sarah didn't seem to have experienced a severe case of COVID. But a day after she leaves the hospital, her husband calls. He says that she's acting weird. She's putting her coat on and off repeatedly. She's confused, delusional, and she's seeing lions and monkeys in her house. Sarah is taken to the hospital again. After detailed examinations, doctors diagnose her with parainfectious encephalopathy, which basically means brain disorder after having an infection, in this case, which is COVID. Remember her diagnosis, and we're going to come back to it later. Now, here's the important question. Is Sarah's story just a rare case of COVID, or symptoms like hers are more common between COVID patients than we think? Well, let's see. A recent study published by Northwestern Medicine in a well-respected medical journal says that up to 80% of the patients examined had neurological symptoms. But wait, don't panic, because much milder symptoms such as loss of smell and taste and dizziness and so forth were also included in this study. What we want to focus on are the more aggressive symptoms. This is where I needed you to remember what Sarah's condition was called. It was called encephalopathy. Dr. Koralink, who is one of the authors of the Northwestern study, explains this condition. Encephalopathy is characterized by altered mental function ranging from mild confusion to coma, and it is the most severe neurological manifestation of COVID-19. So let's see how many patients in this study actually exhibited encephalopathy. The researchers reported that 31.8% of patients who exhibited a neurological symptom had this problem. If we generalize this finding, this is about 25% of all COVID patients. In other words, one in every four patients. They also mentioned that the elderly is at a much higher risk than others. So it seems like Sarah's case is not as rare as we might think. But how does COVID end up affecting the brain? Well, what we know so far is that most likely this is due to more than one fundamental reason. Systematic inflammation, the side effects of our immune system responses, and even the possibility of coronavirus itself directly attacking the nerves are among the top candidates. However, we also know that intensive care unit hospitalization can cause delirium and confusion. Now, the extent in which each of these factors are responsible are still under investigation. As you are watching this video, a lot of our studies are still being conducted, and our understanding of how COVID affects the brain is improving every day. So who knows what we will know tomorrow? More importantly, we are closer than ever in receiving an effective COVID-19 vaccine. But until then, what we know for sure is that our best chance of fighting this disease comes with prevention. So with that note, stay safe and have a healthy and COVID-free end of the year.